Hi guys, Cliff here, welcome back to the channel. Do you know what? I've never built a twin. And Minimum RC uh, recently launched a twin which caught my eye. And I thought, do you know what? I wouldn't mind having a builder one of those. So let me turn you down and you'll see what I've got in front of me. As with all the Minimum RC models, they come in quite a stout box because they have to come from China, but they're always good. And the model is the DH88 Grosvenor House twin engine de Havilland, that is, racer. And I've got the servos, receiver, etc. here. We'll have a look at that. There's a wood pack, and there's a, a screwdriver and knife, and um, the kit itself. Just pop this one open and have a look. The build instructions will be online. I'll put my computer on in a minute and we'll see how to start. But this is my first twin. Would you believe it? Just never built a twin. So we've got a sticker. We've got, I, I know what some of these parts are because I've I've made one of these, I've made I think, three or four of the minimum RC models. But yeah, does that look familiar to you? Grosvenor House being the hotel chain. It was a, a racing plane. So that's the top and bottom of the fuselage. This is the fuselage. Obviously tail components. Engine nacelles, because it's a twin. And the wings, there we go. Uh, they've got a score mark down underneath to give it some uh, aerofoil shape and that's it that's all there is to it and stick a set in here we've got yeah let's pop it open control arms control linkages props double-sided tape wheels and undercarriage, some carbon reinforcement and dihedral brace, servo trays, these will be the nacelle motor mounts and uh, wheel centers hubs. So that's pretty straightforward. And this one is a fun one. This is the full kit. It, it, you get just a basic kit if you order just a basic kit. I've ordered the full kit with hardware. So we've got a battery, 260 milliamp hour, and that, believe it or not, is the battery charger. If you haven't got one, USB, plug it in, and away you go. This is a two into one adapter for the two motor wires to join into the receiver which is here. I've ordered the DSMX or DMX stroke two. Nice little, nice little thing. Um, three servos. Oh, it'll be ailerons for one servo and rather an elevator for the other because they usually have like a, a V shape to the two ailerons. And the two dinky little cordless motors so there we are, that is the kit, and I'm going to now switch my laptop on, have a look at the instructions and see where I start. But invariably it'll be this packet, because you'll need to start gluing up the main clutch that everything fits to. I've seen the video on the Minimum RC website, and it looks great fun, really quite quick actually, so, so let's crack on. Okay, I've just got the instructions uh, online you go to minimum rc go to the dh88 page scroll down and you'll see a link to the instructions uh, the kit normally comes with a tube of two tubes of glue one for the foam and one super glue they're called ufo and 502 ufo is for bonding the foam parts and 502 is like a super glue um, but they seem to have omitted it so i've dug out my own glue which is yuhu pour which is the same thing and i've also got um, CA so that was a little oversight by whoever packed the kit 
the first thing to do is to break out some of these wooden components and start making a start. Let's turn that over. Seems that it's sponsored. Okay, so in fact I'll use their scalpel, why not, eh? Right, so first part I need is the dihedral brace, which is there, and the servo tray. It's going to be a great little indoor flyer, actually, for next season. If you've got a little square, it's a good idea just to make sure things are upright. May as well put a bit on the top. Okay, that's step one. Now the next step is to mount the servos in their three slots. Uh, before I can do that, I want to connect or everything up and make sure the servos are centered a point of note with the servos be very very careful to look at the two illustrations on the instructions they're really clear but all the servos are mounted from this side but the elevator and rudder servo are upside down and now this is very important same with the aileron very important to get that right because the slots in the fuselage side correspond to the height of the servos so double and triple check that you've got those correct off it up to the picture and be absolutely certain. By the way, another little tip I can give you is to um, just run your screwdriver over a magnet a few times because picking up the little screws is so much easier and offering them into the uh, respective holes than it is trying to place them in. The next step, I'll plug that in, the next step is to actually mount the receiver just here. And then use the small cable tie just to neaten it all up. Okay, so I've put the little cable tie on. I've routed the aerial down the side. Keep it inside the fuselage because the fuselage side is going to stick to that in a minute. And something else I've done. They've, in fact, they've shown the um, aerial going down the side of the servo wires. I've moved the servo wires over to this side, so I didn't think that was a very good idea. Um, I've just put a little blob of um, foam adhesive just over the end of the uh, plus and minus because that's going to be moving around when you put the battery in and out. I might even secure it somewhere else as well, but anyway, there it is. That's now ready to accept the fuselage sides. They're pretty good with instructions, just follow them precisely and you can't go wrong. Right, let's just pop that up there and I'm going to cut out the fuselage sides now. Right, these have to be bent. In the palm of the hand, like that. Okay, and we just go over the edge of the table. So like that, stroking down from, it's just the front that needs to be bent in, so not too far out, just that bit there. So you're just aiming to get these wrinkles on the inside. So we glue that onto, I'm guessing, there, good guess Cliff, slot it through there, that slides all the way up, now you'll find that your control horns, if you've put the servers in the right way, are exactly in line with the slots. You could put glue on the side of the servo, I wouldn't particularly say it was recommended, but you could do. Bit there, and Along there, down there. Yep, 
if you get glue anywhere you don't want it or you want to dismantle something um, lighter fluid melts this glue let's just set that down like that just put that there like that and let that set a little bit and then I while I'm waiting I can cut out the top and bottom cut out these parts here which are the top and bottom of the fuselage it's a quick build um, what have we got there we want this piece just working out the best way to do this the first piece to go on is there goes on the inside by the way not the top I'll put a little bend in that over the side of the uh, work table I'm just thinking it might be easier if I glue the front piece first and then glue the back piece as it's sitting down so that's what I think I might do I'm just gonna put some glue across there that goes down level with the front of the cockpit like that might just let that flash off slightly grabs pretty well but you want to get that um, flush with the top otherwise the transfer is going to be uh, the sticker I should say is not going to lie flat properly onto the either the fuselage or the top panel so try and get it flush you can and of course at 90 degrees okay so that's now dry and I'm going to run in a bead of glue just along that edge what I'll do I'll let that dry but I'll work my way around with the front part and the rear part this bit goes on there for instance and when that's all done I'll come back to you and we'll have a look at the next bit so let's see top and bottom now fitted when you come to stick on the other side if this is move uh, is aiming in slightly you'll find you won't be able to get it level with the outside so don't be afraid to give it a good old pull if you need to because it's quite flexible adhesive but what I thought I might do is to uh, just glue this front bit don't forget to leave that bit unstuck by the way for the battery hatch uh, what I thought I might do is just do the front bit first and then do the back bit just to make it a bit more um, manageable and both of these bits are in just a little bit so I'm just giving them a little bit of a tweak out now I'll put some glue on and then I'll just put that one down and get it in place and as you can see it's pretty much level which is what you want Okay, here we go. Try to keep any glue off of the face of the model. Line the back end up, that helped me line the front up. Looks good. Yep. It's easy to push it down, but you can't pull it up very easily, so I'll just hold that front a minute. gone in slightly there that's one way of doing it in an emergency it's a good idea doing it in um, small sections because it makes it a lot more manageable especially if you're new to it if the foam is proud uh, it's a good idea to try and take it back down to the finished level um, and this bit is proud because of the servos are there and it could have just moved up just slightly a fraction of a millimeter just to but then that would have been a little bit higher up the slot so if with hindsight I could have moved it up just slightly and it wouldn't have made any difference but the easy thing to do is just to sand it keeping it square you don't want to go down onto the edges at all Just take it down to your level. In fact, you can go down the whole thing if you want, but you will find that um, you've got a little bit of glue coming up here and there, so it will 
um, snag a little bit but um, just, a, just a suggestion but you've got to be careful you want to keep a nice crisp edge here for when the stickers go on now stickers we've got uh, obviously this is the nose and that's the front piece there no that's this is the the rear deck so this bit here will go from let's put a, there's a there's a little um cut out here for the rudder thin I should say which will have to line up with that hole there I'm going to line up the window frames because that's what's going to draw the eye if it's not right and I'm guessing that this will be reasonably close yeah it's not quite there but it's close enough I can open that out slightly we don't show you that bit actually perhaps it's left perhaps they don't have stickers I think that's poor if they don't and if there isn't a sticker for this I'm just gonna to have to paint it red because I can't leave that like that one thing you really don't want to do is and that is stick this to itself because that, that's game over if you do you'll never part it it's not bad not bad okay so there we go the stepped bit goes on the bottom so as the hatch can open right I have got an overlap there um, I've got it smooth that side but an overlap this side which gives me more material to just knife off very carefully with the knife blade uh, but so there it is basically that's the fuselage covered I'll just tidy that up oh, I've got to find some red tape for that um, red something and that just keeps the battery hatch and that just bends over like that there's a little dotted line there that would be for that to stick onto that like that and that gives you a tag that you can just pull up pop your battery in seal it back down release the tailplane like that and the fin see what I might do actually if I can get a little bit of red paint or something just to paint all these edges because the, the whole aeroplane is red and you know the foam is white be nicer just to touch it all in in red there's a score line on the bottom of the this um, tail plane it needs to be scored a little bit thicker so as the tail plane can move up and down you can use your screwdriver for that there we are same with the fin and rudder there's a little bit of reinforcement to go in the uh, fin, that's that one there. Right, that goes in there, like that. There's a stage, and it's way, way, way down the list, um, installing the control horns. They recommend you install them well, they suggest you install them on sheet 48. I'm going to install them now because once these are glued in, it's quite difficult to get these in with any degree of um, ease because the plywood is thicker than the slot they give you. And uh, obviously it's going to be reluctant to go in. So I'm going to put them in now. In the instructions, that although there's two slots here, the instructions suggest putting it in on that side. 
So that's what I'm going to do. So just sand a little bit of a angle on the there. So I'm going to glue that in. So I'm going to glue that in there now. And this has to be on the opposite side. So that's the underneath I'm looking at. That's uh, this one actually will have to go in second because it's not going to go past. If I put it in there, it's not going to go past the gap. You can see that. So I'll leave the rudder one off for a minute. But what I can do on the right hand side is to actually get that slot prepared. That, we'll see, but that I might have to take that little corner off there, but we'll see in a minute. Let's just pop that back in my box. Right, so they say the next piece to go on is the horizontal stabilizer. Looking at the dihedral brace, and now that looks quite good. So let's just let that set off a minute and see what's next. Probably insert the fin. So we'll let that set till the morning. So that's the fuselage and tail feathers installed. Uh, they all at first glance look the same, but they're not. These have got bigger little ears each side, so they are different each side. Also, I'll need the motors out. Be very careful not to pull the connectors either end. So I'm not pulling on the motor, I'm holding the, the wire, pulling on that. Okay, now these need to be assembled. So the big eared flange faces up. So that goes in there, like that, and then the top surface is level. And then the small one goes in the back, like that. There we go. So at all times being very wary of those leads. Okay, so we need to make up two of those, but they have to be handed. So this big cutout side now is not going to be on the same side. It's going to be on the opposite side, on the right hand side. So I end up with an opposite pair. So I'm just going to run some CA in around these joints and around the motor casing, but before I do that, I'll do the other one as well. Okay, opposite pair, there we go. And the bit with the side with the big holes face the fuselage. All right, that is now ready to glue together. You have to make up the wheels because the undercarriage leg has to be screwed to these four holes here before we can fit them to the um, main spar. Okay, nice solid little mountain. I'll do the other one and I'll come straight back to you. This is the picture in the instructions, okay? Just like that. And then this piece that goes on there like that. Let's get that out of the way a minute. So that slot lines up at the back. Front lines up there. Because there's a top plate that goes in here. Against that side wall there. Give that a little spread. Okay. Put in there. Push with the front there, level with the top there. As with all these 
minimum RC kits you have to be be fairly accurate because they're actually cut out fairly accurately. That's interesting. What's that cliff? When you sight down the back, this side is higher than that side. I guess that's to take the wing dihedral into account. That's clever. A small dob of glue at the back just to hold it. And then you put in the top and bottom plates, which are angled to suit these bits here. These are all the components. I think maybe I could put a small amount of CA on the insides away from the foam and that might seep through and not go too far. Small amount there, I can see it seeped through. So hopefully it will cure before it does any damage to the foam. So there she is sitting on her wheels. Um, and next job is to look at the wings. Cracking on, it's coming together really fast.